Man, I've worked so hard on these settings. And you know what they say. It takes 20% of the effort to get 80% of the result. And then it takes 80% of the effort to get that last 20%. And that's why I've been working so hard on these settings. Because the picture with the settings that I already share with you is fantastic to use black from insertion OLED Motion Pro High. But of course, I want to get a better and better and better result. And the reason why I care so much about these settings is because this is the way I use my TV. I play most of the games with OLED Motion Pro High on this LG C1. But even if you have a different display, you can try these settings and they're going to work fantastic. You might have to be more aggressive with the 22 point calibration that I'm going to share with you, depending on the TV you have. Maybe you have a CX, for example. And I know that the OLED Motion Pro High on the CX might be a little bit darker. So you might need to be a little bit more aggressive, but still try these settings and let me know, okay? So what we're going to use here is the SDR HDR trick that I already shared with you with dynamic tone mapping, and then we're going to do a 22 point calibration. So real quick, I'm gonna show you again the SDR HDR trick so you don't have to go back and watch the video if this is the first video you see. We're going to use dynamic tone mapping on and we are going to turn on HDR on Windows 11 and max out the SDR HDR slider. Then we come here, 1113, 111. We change this mastering peak max CLL to 540. And for 90% of the games, most of the games, you're going to lower this black level or screen brightness to 38, okay? So you're going to open the games on SDR. So auto HDR has to be off. You open the game on SDR, so the HDR on the game has to be off. For most games, this is going to be the value. Screen brightness 38, but for some games, the value is going to be 44. How do you know? Very simple, default, to 38 and if you see black crushing and I'm talking about obvious black crushing like you're clearly crushing blacks it's not a detail it's not something that you might not notice no it's obvious so if you see that black crushing on 38 use 44 that's it that's the only setting you might have to change but these settings I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you are basically set and forget so if you are like me and you want to use OLED Motion Pro most of the time to improve that motion clarity, this is it. You set the settings, open every single game, it works, and yeah, this is amazing. So now, what else we have to do? Let me show you the rest of the settings. Color, 50, color gamut auto detect, warm 50, and I'm going to show you the 22 point calibration. And I am using this game genre presets. That's why I'm lowering the color saturation because I want to have this game genre presets available to use the clarity, the sharpness slider that we have under clarity because I want to take advantage of that sharpness slider for games that look very blurry, okay? Terrible. I do not like to have to add any sharpness on the TV and I don't use it for games that look clean, that look perfect. But for blurry games, I'm definitely going to use that. And when you use this game genre presets, the sharpness slider that's under clarity works on a different way. And it works better. So I'm talking about this clarity, the sharpness that is here on the clarity. So now, let's go to the 22 point calibration. So this is where the magic happens well we are already like i said we are already 80 percent there this is the last 20 percent just to get that near black visibility absolutely perfect man this is you have to try these settings i'm gonna try to record them and show them to you and compare this with the sdr settings with the 22 point calibration and try to see what the differences are 
and I will talk about that. Let me share with you the settings. So here's what we're going to do. You select this method, 22 points, code value, okay? 22 point calibration. And then we're going to start here with the value of 15. So you see I am increasing red, green, and blue to seven. So this is to increase the visibility near black, okay? Now we change one click to 48, red, green, and blue to six. We, in we increase a one more click to 135, red, green, and blue to five. One more, red, green, and blue to four. One more, red, green, and blue to three. One more, red, green, and blue to two. One more, red, green, and blue to one. So now you might think, oh, well, that makes sense, you know? You're starting at seven, you do seven, six, five. Why did you take so long for that? that? That makes sense. Well, I took so long because why not start <laughs> with 10, with 15, with 17? Why not decrease instead of in one click? Why not decrease it in steps of two or three? Okay, so to get these values, I use many near black test patterns. I compare SDR accurate settings without black from insertion, the SDR HDR trick with Tom mapping off, native HDR, not a cyberpunk, I mean the na native HDR of cyberpunk is, uh, is terrible and has the black level race. I compare on other games. So I basically make sure that this is going to give me the visibility near black just right. And I'm not overdoing it because if you overdo it, you're going to affect the picture quality okay and you don't want to do that you want to get the best picture quality so now what is the difference between this trick these settings and the SDR custom settings for black from insertion that I share with you I have to do more comparisons and I have to basically record these settings stop the re not stop the recording pause the recording then change all the settings to the SDR trick and then start the recording again to see the differences on the brightness and try to record near black and all of that because for me to tell the difference is very difficult because basically when I go turn off HDR, change to SDR, open the game again or even without having to open the game again, it, it takes some time. So. Because it takes some time, I forget. I need to see it side by side. If I had two TVs, it would be so much easier to figure out all these settings because all the settings that I've shared with you are equivalent. They are, they are all trying to accomplish the same thing, to get the same consistent picture quality. So basically with any of the settings that I share with you, I get the same near black detail, same. No difference whatsoever. The difference is going to be on the brightness of the mid-tones, the highlights, the way they look, the colors. I've give, you, I've give you some different settings for the colors, but the near black detail, we have to have that perfect. So near black and the black level needs to be absolutely perfect. Otherwise the picture doesn't it looks washed out, the colors look washed out. So that's what I've basically mastered <laughs> to get the same near black visibility no matter what combination of settings I am using. So again, I'm gonna try to record this to compare on the same recording to see which one is better. But you have to understand that there is no way my camera can record what I see in front of me. No way. You have to try the settings yourself on your own TV. Because there is always somebody who says, oh, that didn't look good on the recording. I have to point the camera to the screen. I cannot record with my Elgato capture card. Because the TV is fixing the content. The TV is fixing the game. The picture quality that I see is because the TV settings because I've seen some people telling me, why don't you just record 
from the GPU with using the GPU. And they don't understand that I have to record what I see. And what I see is a consequence of the TV settings. The source doesn't look good. Okay? Because I'm opening the games on SDR and I have HDR on Windows. The games are double washed out. They look terrible. And yeah, that's just the way it is. So let me know if you tried these settings. If you have any questions, these settings are the result of more than 2,000 hours of work, okay? Many people have contributed to these settings. I mean, most of the tweakings that I've shared with you here are a consequence of my interaction, the interaction that I have with people here on the channel. I, I couldn't have figured out these settings myself. If I don't have this YouTube channel, I would not play with this picture quality. It's that simple. <laughs> it's that simple. I am not a genius. I am not a TV calibrator. I do not have a colorimeter. This is a consequence of a lot of work from my part and a lot of good feedback from my viewers. And that's why I make these videos. And, you know, I, of course, I like a lot of things about doing this. I like, of course, the, the satisfaction of helping people to get the picture quality they want. And, yeah, there's a lot of things that I like about doing that. But one, definitely one of them is the results that I have today. This is the picture quality that I want. This looks perfect to me. Absolutely perfect. I'm so happy with this picture quality because I'm using this all in motion pro and, and it it doesn't look like I am losing anything. This looks like perfect. This looks perfect. This looks brighter than SDR. So basically the highlights I measure with my phone, which is not accurate, okay? But it's still the sensor of my phone and it is a point of reference, of comparison between the settings that I use. I measure over 300 nits. So highlights, I measure 310, 320. So that might not be accurate and based on the tailboat plateaus law and based on my motion clarity testing, I should be losing with all the motion pro high on this LG C1, I should be losing 62% brightness because OLED Motion Pro High is reducing the persistence to 38%. And when you reduce the persistence, the, the pixel visibility time to 38%, you are losing 62% of brightness based on the tailboat plateau's law. So if this LG C1 is capable of up to 800 nits, then you calculate what is 38% of 800, then you get like 300 nits, close to 300 nits. I mean, a little bit over 300 nits. So that's what I measure. So that's about right. And that is more brightness than what SDR would require. So this is still, this is still going to give you some HDR flare, you know. And you can get more brightness, for example, I can get more brightness if I use Ola Motion Pro Medium. I can get like 400 nits. And then that definitely looks like HDR. You need 600 nits for HDR, but still, it looks, it gives you that HDR punch on the highlights. So yeah, man, I'm very, very happy with this. And now my only question is, are these the absolute best settings for Ola Motion Pro High? They might be very likely so but I, I still want to make sure that the SDR calibration that I share with you with module HDR on on the service menu of course without that I can tell you for sure the settings are better no question about that but if I turn on module module HDR on the service menu and I play on SDR I get more full screen brightness power so I have to see what the differences are maybe with these settings, I am going to get brighter mid-tones most of the time. But if the APL of the scene is higher, then the SDR picture is going to look brighter. 
That's what I'm guessing. So most of the time this one will be brighter, but the SDR settings might be brighter in some instances. I'm talking about, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 on the snow. Everything is white. For sure. I can tell you, I don't even need to test that. I can tell you for sure the SDR settings with module HDR on the service menu are going to look brighter. No question on my mind. So, but near black they're going to be almost the same. Almost the same. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.